Welcome to the fourth and last conference night of the series Rescuing the Family with the title Family a Precious Good. We are very happy that you are here on this last night of conferences, especially the mothers who are with us today, as we will talk about the great love mothers have. We would also like to mention that this series has been prepared in a joint effort between the Family Department, led by Pastor Adelicia Fontes, and the Department of Evangelism, led by the speaker, Pablo Hunger, who will delight us with the conference today. The lecturer, Pablo Hunger, has been married for 21 years and has five children. He has served in the youth and family counseling on all continents, sharing the Word of God and a message of hope. Our hope is that these conferences will serve as a rescue for the many families who are eager to see a ray of hope in their homes. We will enjoy a melody before moving on to the conference. Sabía que habría iniquidad Y si el hombre pecaba Dios el hijo vendría en su lugar A morir por la humanidad Y como les iba diciendo niños Dios creó todo perfecto Pero bueno, alguien quiso dañar todo su plan ¿Qué pasó? Y bueno Sofía ya vamos a ver lo que pasó con la existencia de los ángeles y el inicio de la historia de la humanidad. ¡Vamos todos, niños! Hizo Dios a los ángeles, hizo los serafines, también hizo al querubín protector. Conforme a su imagen y a sus semejanzas, así lo hice en el gran yo soy. Todo era felicidad, solo había armonía. Las estrellas del alba, todos juntos adoraban a Dios Hasta que se halló maldad en aquel querubín protector Tenía odio y envidia en su corazón, anhelaba ser como Dios se reveló y luchó Y a muchos ángeles se engañó Y tuvo que ser echado De la presencia de Dios oh, 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 De la presencia de Dios oh, 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 oh. Por la 
Before listening to the conference, we would like to ask God for His direction during the conference through a prayer. Let's bow our heads to pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for gathering us for the final uh, conference. And we especially ask your blessings for the speaker who will be giving us this topic today and all the families, especially the mothers who will be listening to this video, we, uh, and as well as all the listeners. We ask his blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. We now invite the speaker, Pastor Pablo Hunger. Good night to everyone who listened to us, husband, wives, father and mothers. We have reached the last conference addressed to the family. Today, team is titled Mothers, Love in Action. We thank the writer Fanny Gonzalez from Colombia for her contribution with this topic. George Washington's mother, the first president of the United States from 1732 to 1799, taught him the biblical principle on politics and social morals that he cultivated throughout his life. From his pious mother, he inherits the habits of praying twice a day and of engaging in regular reading of the scriptures. Mothers are God's agents to Christianize families. Does being a woman mean being prepared to be a mother? It seems to some people that the maximum value of a woman is to become a mother, to gain acceptance and social and religious values. However, being a mother is not a race against age, nor should it be done to fulfill a cultural requirement. There is a simple truth, and is that not every woman has the key or plans to become a mother. There are women who are born to fulfill great purposes within God's work and outside it, but don't have the vocation to become mothers, and that is not a shameful or sinful reason. We live in a dark and difficult time for each mother. At the present time, moral falter and family values are in crisis. Therefore, what is more important to analyze is that the success of a future mother begins knowing how to wait for her time of psychological and spiritual maturity. When a woman has her defined identity and knows why she wants to be a mother, she will avoid the failure of her task. Today, more than ever, children are born without a purpose and without the representation of a father. Serious studies about the role of a family in a society affirm that 83% of incarcerated youth in drug addiction, alcoholism, promiscuous life come from homes with conflict, separated or divorced, pa or divorced parents. Many women become biological mothers in mature physically, spiritually and mentally, and then look for someone to take care of the, the little ones, as if it was a vain task that anyone can do, and so neglecting their great commitment and responsibility toward heaven. Many mothers had let Satan, the prince of this world, rule their minds and their families. They have left this maleficent being to take power over their children. It is time for an awakening and for the prince of darkness to leave the homes. The world needs mothers who are not only of name, but of heart. Mothers who will fulfill the divine purpose and bring to the world children who will become a blessing to the family, the society, and the world. For you, dear mother who are listening, if this had been your case, that you were blinded by emotions, or by the influence of those who claim to be your friends, but who led you to problems, and you had made the wrong decisions. And today you are alone, confused, and you don't know how to continue with your son or with your daughter. I want to tell you not to despair. There is hope for you. Today is the time to change the course of your life and ask for the help of your Heavenly Father. With the help of God, you can change your uncertain future and your child's future. 
but also for you, dear mother, that you have your husband by your side, or maybe your children are already big. Your work is not ended yet. You are still a mother. The years go by, the children grow up, but they still need the advice, the example and the tenderness of a mother. Even if the children are no longer in your physical care, they are still your children. It is not time to cross your arm peacefully. Ask God to help you to continue this work with patience while you are a mother. I remember the case of a great doctor of medicine, the surgeon Bernd Carlson, who recognized his success to the great tireless work of his mother, her firmness, her principle and values, her constant insistence that he will read books that motivate him, guided him, and they led him to success in his career. His mother had raised him alone, but like a great hero, she led him to the success of his life. Ben Carlson became a renowned surgeon for his success in Siamese operation. The important thing is not what has been left behind, but what you can do about the future. Johabet, a mother for the final crisis. Let's see this example. The Bible illustrates the values and love of a mother who fulfilled God's purpose in giving her a son. And there went the man of the house of Levi and took to a wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a godly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and bathed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river's side and when she saw the ark among the flags she went her maid to fetch it, and when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to the Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter says to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter says unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. We found this in Exodus chapter 2, verse number 1 until 9. In this interesting story, we see how Jochebed, coming from a family of priests, fully understood how important were the duties and responsibility as a mother. And without a doubt, God will reward her fidelity in her son's education. Jochebed was a mother of impact. The story says she raised him. Today, the world also needs real mother in every sense of the word who understand the sacred nature of their motherhood and who, with the fear of God, educate the children to be useful in the father's hand. Moses was adopted in Pharaoh's palace as the center of Egyptian culture. Against all odds, Jochebed had to deal with the whole cultural, religious, and pagan system, and she fought with courage against this current so that her son will not lose his Hebrew identity. She taught him his true origin and that his God was not the God of the Nile, but the Lord of hosts. As women of the 21st century have not seriously understood the responsibility of this mission that God has given us, do we clearly understand our duty to sow with love and patience 
the fear of God in the midst of children and youth so that they may manifest his character? We live in the midst of a system contrary to moral and spiritual principles. And as mothers, we must fight strongly against immorality and worldliness, which like rivers are carrying the inheritance of God or children in basket of reeds and without direction. Today, many mothers live bitter and meaningless lives, and the enemy takes advantage of this emotional insecurity to steal our children and to destroy them. Knowing how to raise children requires discipline and dependence on the divine counsel, so that children may learn, by good example, to relate to the Most High, obey Him and fulfill their duty. That is why prayer and vigilance will be a mother's weapon to faithfully accomplish her task. Several studies have been done on the genetic transmission that passes from parents to children. An article written in the magazine The Economist entitled Genes Play a Role in the Probability of Divorce showed the high probability that the failure of parents are transmitted to children. Other studies show the high probability of alcoholic parents having children with alcohol problems. But I want to tell you mothers, today, that although there are high chances of future problems for your child, today is the time to change that direction. Your decision and resolution can make your child something different. Together with God, you can lead them to success. A difficult mission with only God makes possible. From the beginning, Jochebed understood that her son didn't belong to her. She felt responsible for him because she knew that he belonged to God and that was what mattered. For 12 years, she educated and prepared him for God. With love and sacrifice, she gave up everything to be by her son's side. Full of wisdom, she jealously guarded the life of the liberator of Israel, knowing that she was forming not only a son, but a man of God. She was a constant influence in expressing her love. She watched and prayed for her son because she loved him, and she was not willing to give him up easily to Pharaoh and his Egyptian culture without first her son obtaining the true and permanent identity with his Creator. Her great struggle to save him had the goal that God had placed in her heart, and she was not going to abandon it. That is why, in the storm, she did not let herself be frightened by the threat of death, nor did she give into fear, but instead allow God to direct her in this miraculous plan. It was so that because of her great love, effort, and consecration to God, her son acquired the foundation of a firm and strong character able to endure the temptation, scarcity, and loneliness of the desert for 40 years. Thus he went from prince to shepherd and became the greatest leader that the people of Israel have known. Yet, even here, he did not lose the impression received in childhood. The lessons learned at his mother's side could not be forgotten. They were a shield from the pride, the infidelity, and the vice that flourish in mid of the splendor of the court. How far-reaching in its result was the influence of that one Hebrew woman, and she, an exile and a slave. The whole future life of Moses, the great mission which he fulfilled as the leader of Israel, testified to the importance of the work of the mother, of the Christian mother. There is no other work that can equal this. To a very great extent, the mother holds in her own hands the destiny of her children. She is dealing with developing minds and characters 
working not alone for time, but for eternity. In the same way, you, dear mother, can protect your children by placing solid foundation in the life of those God has given you, especially during the first year of life. As you covet, do not neglect the influence that you live, especially during the first 12 years. This will be the base that you live in their tender minds and hearts that will last for all the future. Do not let others be the ones who mold the character of your children. If you want to see a different future, you must make great sacrifice, as did Jochebed, to be with your children and sculpt the principle of heaven in their minds and fresh hearts. I want to remind you that the money you can earn through a profession that can give, give you some satisfaction cannot reward what you can do personally for the tender hearts if you leave them to the care of others. As a mother, you have a call from God and one day he will ask you for the account of the role he had left you. Although it is rarely recognized, the work of a mother is one of the highest and most complex tasks. Terrible carelessness. On a certain occasion, during a visit to a farm that had a chicken pen, one of them looked very fat. The owner of the place warned that we should not go near her because the hen had chicks and she was very jealous of her young. However, and in spite of the warning, the attention of the visit attracted the large number of the chicks there. But as they got a little closer and seeing the shadow of the person, the brody hen raised its wings and aggressively pushed forward to pick. It's amazing how she looked after his chick, and she's just an animal. By instinct, every animal fights and cares for its young until death, when it perceives even the slightest danger. What a unique example for Christian mother at the end of time. Under the grace of God, a mother is qualified to do the impossible. When a mother loves and understands her purpose, her vision shows her what she has to do. Then she will make the maximum effort to save her children and will be placed in a higher human dimension to free them from any attack and even from the shadow of any enemy. A mother of influence will understand that no incident in the life of her children should be taken as, as an isolate and insignificant. Today, more than ever, we mothers must fight in prayer and protect our children with determination and courage, with satanic snare and spiritual Egypt. Satan knows that the human being functions according to what he believes and thinks. That is why he attacks each mother mind and through her seeks to sow destruction in each child. Hence, if a mother loses her balance and mental health for lack of connection with the divine source, she can bring her family to a breakdown point. That is why we should take care of any emotional disorder, because uncontrolled emotions are just like a car without brakes. Each mother must watch and pray so that her mind doesn't fall into deep depression because any mental weakness will be an opportunity given to the enemy to destroy not only the children but also the whole family. Therefore, their mother's mind must always be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit and her heart must always remain cheerful and calm, even if the burdens are hard and heavy. A mother who depends on God for everything is an unbreakable pillar of, of the home. The enemy can never defeat the mother on her knees, because Satan is a defeated enemy and flies when she sees 
a mother praying in her closet. Mothers, remember that the creator of the universe will help you in your task. In his power and by his name, you may lead your children until they become overcomers. With enlightened vision, we must today discern which modern Trojan horses are gingerly entering our homes, such as music, fashion, unhealthy recreation, television, internet, etc., cunning snares against which many mothers are not aware of the dangers of this terrible neglect. The urgent call of the heavenly messenger is that we should worry about instructing and training our children the fear of God and the faith of Jesus. As watchmen mothers who teach them to overcome evil with good and this convulsive world without biblical principle. The plan of love must be carefully nourished, else it will die. Every good principle must be cherished if we will have it thrive in the soul. That which Satan plants in the heart, envy, jealously, evil surmising, evil speaking, impatience, prejudice, selfishness, covetousness, and vanity, must be uprooted. If these evil things are allowed to remain in the soul, they will bear fruit by which many shall be defiled. Oh, how many cultivate the poisonous plant that kill out the precious fruits of love and defile the soul? Mothers, you are not alone. Your compassionate Redeemer is watching you with love and sympathy, ready to hear your prayers and to render you the assistance which you need. He knows the burdens of every mother's heart and is her best friend in every emergency. His everlasting arms support the God-feeding faithful mother. Even being hung on the cross of Calvary, Jesus did not forget his mother. He asked his beloved disciple John to take care of his mother. Do not let your wife burden along the responsibility of the home, of the children. Be a support for her and it will be a blessing not only for you, but also for the heroic work she does in the education of the children. Many times a recognition or a word of encouragement is a ban for the wife who is exhausted by the intense struggles of the day, trying to interact the weakness of the character of the children and always seeking to be the support of the home. Remember that emotional stress can often bring more weird and tears than physical work. When you return to your home, although you are also tired of the day's work, be a support in the care of the children. Spend some time with them so your wife may rest a little and you can finish the day together by sharing the responsibilities of the home. Talk together about the occurrences of the day and be the partner, support and counsel your wife needs. God's plans are always perfect. The story that I will tell you next is the story of Sister Fanny Gonzalez who is the contributor of this topic. She tells her story of how she became a mother and she has kept these stories in her heart for many years. The story is known by some and unknown by many. At 18 years, she decided to serve God in His work. She loved infants and young homeless people very much and worked with them. But when she got married at 24, she knew that she reserved a strong fear of becoming a mother. For this, and for another clinical reason, it will be impossible to have children. Sister Fanny Gonzalez says that her married life continued normally and in the development of her talents. With joy, she helped the children, young people, and the elderly who needed her help, their collaboration. However, after a few years, 
she unexpectedly began to feel something strange in her heart, felt that something was missing, and that those same social works that she did in favor of the children, awakened in her life a fervent desire to be a mother, also sensing a feeling of frustration because she knew that humanly she could not have children. But to her amazement and that of her husband, at 31 years, she became pregnant. She had a child in her womb, and it was a miracle. God had changed his plan. It was his will that she would become a mother, and that was what mattered. Faced with God's plan, her vision changed, and even today she is very happy with a gift from heaven. Unfortunately, there are mothers who think that the children shouldn't have been born. Others think that the child has only brought difficulties to the home, unaware that they are the ones who prepare them for the development of their character, and give us the opportunity to exercise a ministry of love and mercy. It is our children who teach us to practice the virtue of patience and lead us to experience great victories as women and as mother. All good or bad children, believers or non-believers, have a purpose in the life of each mother and it is up to her to discover it. Sister Fanny says that today her son, to the glory of God, is a medical student, and on the human side, he has given strength to her life, to her home, and to her ministry. He has been the point of support in the social, moral, and spiritual area. Her son has allowed to share this story because throughout this life, he has been the support of his parents, giving shelter to young people who are looking for a city of refuge. Sister Fanny recognized that it was God who gave her the son, and to him she consecrated her son each day. They are young woman, they are sister. If God has called you or called you to be a mother, it is because he has trained you and prepared you for this great mission. We must not interrupt God's plan and seek human solution. The existence of a child with the blessing of the Creator give us strength to fight, to serve, to uproot the egoism of thinking only about ourselves. Children teach us to love and forgive. We must never complain about our children. If maybe they didn't come out with the mold we wanted, we must accept them and accept their differences. Our duty is to lead them to unite with God, and then they will have the power to resist the strongest temptation. Then they and we will receive the reward of overcomer, that is our task. Here I found some messages that my children wrote for my wife where they express their feelings and affection and gratitude. I want to read some of them. Some of these expressions are rewarded for every mom who works with so much love and dedication on their behalf. Here it says, for example, this one from my youngest daughter, Dear Mommy, thank you for being the best mommy in the world and making good food, encouraging me when I am sad. I love you so much. Once again, thank you for being everything. Or this other message here. I want to thank you, mommy, for absolutely everything. You have been so selfless and compassionate in all that you have done for me. You make me all feel very special and work so hard to make me happy in the morning. I can hear you get up very early to start cooking so that I can have a good meal. You do your best to make free time from your busy schedule to have fun times with us. When we are six, you do your best to help us be comfortable. 
Thank you for encouraging me to be strong in life and to set high goals. Most of all, I thank you for being a God-fearing woman. You have been my example of who I should be as a Christian. Mom, you are the best mom in the world. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful message is. Or this other one with nice picture. Dear mommy, I love you. You are the best mom in the world. They are different nice cards that the children put with nice messages. Dear mommy, I'm, so, I'm sorry whenever I made you sad. I will try to act much better. This is why I send you this letter. I am the happiest person to live with you. I am glad to have you as my mom. And continue writing the message. And so the children send nice cards and they also prepare nice message. Here is one when was little or youngest daughter. I love you, mommy, so much. And Talita. Dear children, don't get tired to thank your mothers and father for the love, affection, and tireless service you receive every day. Many times we say it when it is too late. Give them a few minutes to thank them for what they have done for you. I thank my wife for the beautiful work she has done for my children, and she continues to do each day with a lot of love and dedication. Thank you, my dear Lisbeth, for that. But I still have another thing, a person who had given me the inspiration and the desire to serve God. I wish at this moment to call my mom and express my gratitude for her patient work with me and ask her to share with us advice for young mothers. I will call her at this moment. Hello? Hello, good evening, ma'am. Speaking your son, Pablo. Hi, I'm Pablo. You so nice to hear you, son. How well, are you? I'm going fine, thank you. I'm calling you in the middle of the last conference that had been presented with the motto, Rescue in the Family. The title of the series was Family, a Precious Good. And today, we had talked about mothers loving action. I cannot finish this conference without addressing you, my dear mother, and I thought I would do it live. I have you on speaker and the audience is listening to you. I thought it was very important to call you, to tell you how special you had been and are for me. Thank you very much for your great love, affection, patience, but also firmness in the good principles and for the inspiration that you had placed on my life for spiritual things. You had been a great example for me. You took time to raise me in the fear of God. Thanks, ma'am. I also know that you many times had been firm with me to help me. Thank you also for that. I also know that you had prayed for me and since my birth you entrusted me in the hand of God. Thank you very much for that. I am and my siblings are largely what you had placed in us. God will continue guiding you every day regulating health and strength to support that in his health and continue to be the same inspiration and counselor that you had always been. I love you, ma'am. Thank you so much, son. Thank you. I know that, um, of course, the result of your education and what you have accomplished was not because of my efforts, but because of God's help that worked in your heart. Because like you said, since you were little, we dedicated you to, to the Lord. So thank you also for your words of thanks. You, you really make your dad and I happy. But of course, we also know that it's important for us to be firm with you and also your brothers and sisters because they would follow your example. So that was something very important in the family. Well, it makes me very happy. Yes. I also like to ask you if you can help me and also the audience and give a counsel to the mothers and advice to the mothers who are listening to you since you have raised up several of my brothers in the ways of the Lord. 
what counsel you can give to the mothers that are hitting you? Well, for me, it was important to spend the most amount of time possible with my children because this gives them a sense of security. And also, I think we need to know that the way we treat them, if we, for example, talk to them with shouting, they will respond to us in the same way. So that's why when we are a little bit stressed and the children want something from us, we need to try to calm down so that we can speak respectfully to them because that's how they will answer to us as well. And it's also important that when a child is asking us to things for things to cry, we shouldn't let them cry all the time. We need to treat them with kindness and also be firm and constant, but also very really kind. Sometimes the children talks crying to us because he wants some attention from us. And when we hear them, we look another way. But that's not good. If a child is talking to us, we also need to look in their eyes and take time because they need our help. And like you said earlier, when you're th words of thanks, we as mothers also need to be firm when they're doing their studies, but then they also learn the most academic things and education, information, or music classes to see what talents they have, what they like, so that they can develop and prepare themselves for life. But the most important thing in my life was to teach them that God should be in first place. And I tried to also show an example of this. And when they grew up, for them, it was also important to have Christ first in their life. So that's what I can say that was a result in my family. And they had to dedicate time to their work and their children, of course, but first of all, they dedicated to God. So once again, to resume, to spend the most time possible with their children and to teach them that God Thank needs you, to Mom, be in first place. Thank you, for your place. words and for your counsels. And I hope this will be a blessing for all the moms who are hearing us. May God continue giving you wisdom. May the Lord continue giving you his blessings and sustain you always. I love you, mom. Greetings also to that who has also been a great example for me and a great inspiration. Tell him I love him too. I will call you later. A hug, mom. God bless you. Thank you so much, son. To you, dear mother that you listen to this theme, these words of gratitude that I have expressed to my mother, I dedicate to you as well. I know that you have also done and continue to do your best for your children. George Washington also expressed about his mother. My mother was the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Everything I am, I owe to my mother. All my success in life I attribute to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from my mother. Mothers, what a great gift from heaven. What a great help God has given us for our life. Mother, be courageous. Keep going. You are not alone. The Lord is at your side to help you in this great mission that you have to prepare the great men and woman of tomorrow. Children are entrusted to their parent as a precious legacy that God will require one day from their hands. We should dedicate more time to their upbringing with care and prayer. He entrusted them to our care to educate them for heaven. We will have to give an account of how we fulfill this sacred commission. May the Lord give his blessings to each mother so that in this solemn day of accounts, each one of us can tell, Father, here I am the children you have given me. The Lord bless you, mothers. Amen. I wish in this night to make a special prayer for all mothers. 
since we have talked about them and the great work they do. I ask everyone to stand up and address us in prayer to God and ask Him to support each mother in her important work. I want to ask God to give each mother the patience, the firmness, the constancy, and the love that her home needs, especially her children. I want to ask God to inspire each mother to trust in the power from on high that can work miracles in the hearts and life of her children. Dear Mother, keep going. Let's bow our faces and pray to God. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to thee in this evening, in our evening in the last conference, and we thank you, Lord, for the dear mother that you had given us. We thank you, Lord, for the mothers that are present also in this conference and for the mothers that are watching this video. Lord, thank you for the mothers. Give them strength, Lord. Give them patience. Give them firmness. Give them courage. Give them, Lord, an inspiration for the children. Lord, you know the great work the mothers are doing. Thank you for the mother that you had given me. And thank you for the wife that you had given me that is a great mother also for my children. Lord, bless her and bless all the mothers that are here in this conference. Lord, give them the blessing they need and help them in the future work that they still need to do for our children. Lord, thank you that you also took care of your mother and that you give us the example that you also will give the strength and the support the mothers also need today. Lord, we give all the mothers in this evening into your hand. Lord, bless them. We ask all this and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us in this last conference of the series Family, a Precious Good. We hope to see you in another opportunity with another series of conference. It was a great joy to be able to share these topics with you. Always approach God. He is your rescue. I recommend that you ask for information to continue studying the Bible and guide your family in the ways of God. Request weekly spiritual meeting schedules. Do not miss them. God bless you and until next time. We have concluded with the last night of the conference. We thank the speaker for sharing this inspiring topic with us all. We want to remind you that if you have not yet completed the decision card that was handed out last night, you still have the opportunity to do so today. Ask for the card at the exit. You may also take the marriage communication questionnaire that was handed out on the second night ask for the assistance near you for these materials. You can also request the materials by emailing by writing to info at biblewell.org or by sending a WhatsApp message to plus one seven seven zero seven four four seven one nine zero. Our next program will be a series dedicated to children and will be shared during the month of August. It will take place from August 12 to 18, 2018. If you would like to receive the materials and share it in your home or in your group with neighboring children, do not hesitate to write us and send us your contact information. We repeat the WhatsApp number where you can send us your contact. It is plus one seven seven zero seven four four seven one nine zero. After this event, we will have a very special series which includes documentaries on Jerusalem entitled Jerusalem on the Footsteps of Jesus. This special program has been prepared for the month of October 2018. It will present a series of 14 videos about Jerusalem along with a study of the fascinating book of Revelation. This series will be presented from October 28th to November 10, 2018. Prepare your church or group to enjoy these special events. Do not miss them. We wish you a good night and hope to see you during the next conference. May God richly bless you.